Hi, this is Gina with Resplendent Daughter Ministries. Thanks for visiting today. Let's open in prayer. Father, thank you for the joy that we have in our Savior, Jesus Christ. And as we look at Philippians 3 today, I pray that you'll open our hearts to what you have for us about things that can steal our joy. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, the topic of today's video is Beware the Joy Killers. We can observe with some bemusement that Paul's editing and revision skills, he didn't use them so aptly in the letter to the Philippian church. When we look at the end of chapter 2, it appears that Paul is about to wind up. He's about to tack a closing onto his letter. And in that vein, at the beginning of the next chapter, chapter 3, he starts out with the word, finally. But then, after admonishing the Philippians to rejoice in the Lord, he seems to think of something that steals his joy, fake Christians who actively work against evangelistic efforts, specifically his efforts to establish Christian congregations. And he takes off on a vehement rant. Who are these people who so inspire Paul's ire and condemnation? He speaks here of two categories of opponents whose intent is to divide and lure away into error gullible believers. You may have met the first group in others of Paul's letters. They're commonly called Judaizers. These are those who formerly disdained Gentile peoples, referring to them as dogs not worthy of salvation, which is why Paul refers to those troublemakers as dogs, here in verses 2 through 3. All of today's scripture references in the written blog from which this video is made are from the New English translation. Verse 2 and 3 say this, Beware of the dogs, beware of the evil workers, those who mutilate the flesh. For we are the circumcision, the ones who worship by the Spirit of God, exult in Christ Jesus and do not rely on human credentials. These evildoers had written off the entire Gentile world, which was the greatest majority of the world, for goodness sake, prior to Paul and others beginning to evangelize it. As Christian missionaries spread the gospel message to non-Jewish people groups such as the Philippians, Judaizers would come in right behind them and slap a whole bunch of Jewish tradition, rules, regulations, etc. on them in the vein of, you can't be a Christian unless you do all this Jewish rigmarole too. The chiefest of this was, of course, circumcision, which Paul specifically mentions in these two verses. The Judaizers exalted rules and behaviors over loving relationships, which are the essence, the bedrock foundation of the Christian walk. Paul was intimately acquainted with the rule-worshiping life because he had formerly lived it, as he describes in verses 5 and 6 of chapter 3. We see the second group in verses 18 and 19 of chapter 3. Paul says, For many live, about whom I have often told you, and now with tears. I tell you that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ. Their end is destruction. Their God is their belly. They exult in their shame, and they think about earthly things. Hmm, what are the descriptors of this group of joy killers? The overriding characteristic is that they are more focused on earthly things than on the mission Christ has given every Christian. I'll focus on that mission in the next couple of posts. But their focus is on satisfying their own fleshly appetites of various kinds. 
We're all tempted by something, at least one something. In some cases, several somethings. Even those of us who've been adopted by Jesus Christ, who are his children, his transformed saints, none of us is immune to temptation. But this group described here as the enemies of the cross of Christ does not, this group does not belong to Jesus Christ. They worship their own selfish desires. Paul says their God is their belly. And this has sometimes been interpreted to, to say that they're compulsive overeaters. While that could be one manifestation, in the larger sense, these people give in to any and every fleshly desire that comes across their paths. And worse, they rejoice in their carnality. So here, Paul paints two extremes of ungodliness. One rejoices in their legalism and the other rejoices in their hedonism. Paul warns the Philippians to avoid both groups as both are evil enemies who will divide churches and dampen the flame of holy, righteous joy. Although he's describing non-Christians sometimes masquerading as Christians, Paul realizes that true believers can sometimes get the stink on them too. That is why Paul says, beware, don't step in the dog poop. In the next post, we'll examine the nature of the true believer in Jesus Christ. Paul does that so magnificently here in chapter 3. I can hardly wait to dig into that. Let's pray together. Lord God, it is so easy to get slimed. I thank you for holy discernment, which often I am sadly lacking, and for forgiveness and cleansing and restoration. Your saints, your beloved, need all of these to deal with stepping in it and getting the stink of sin on our lives. Thank you for how you pick us up, clean us up, and again, restore, restore our righteous joy when we come to you all dirty and marred by the enemies of the cross. We worship you, our Savior and King. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, I want you to know it is such a blessing to get to spend time with you here at the Empower channel. And if my videos bless you, you can find more of them here. But you can also find inspiring videos from other of our Empower contributors. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel and share it with others. My videos are made from my written blogs, which I make about five days a week. And you can find the address for my blog here on the screen. Please drop by and comment. I'd love to hear from you. You can also contact me with your comments on my Twitter page and you can see my Twitter handle there on your screen as well.